The New York Rangers might have the chance to bring back and re-sign Patrick Kane, the best American hockey player of all time. And I think if we have the chance, we should. I know a lot of Rangers fans don't want to see him brought back for many reasons. And I understand that. And one of the big ones is the lineup situation would be, it'd be weird. You'd have to change up a lot. You're not touching that second line really, but obviously the first and third would probably have to change to fit in Patrick Kane somewhere. And I don't think he's going to be in the bottom six. So you're probably going to see a guy like Blake Wheeler potentially dropping down. But before we take a look at the actual line combos we could potentially see, let's take a look here at the point totals he's had over the last few years. Last year with the Rangers after being traded at the deadline, had 19 games played, 5 goals, 7 assists, 12 points. And in the playoffs, had 7 games played, 6 points. So not bad. He, he played decent. I mean, he didn't play his overall best game i would say but he still produced offensively still put up decent point totals especially in the playoffs although the rangers couldn't really get anything done and patrick king didn't have the the overall best you know playoff run i wouldn't say but he still produced some points which is obviously a good thing to see but patrick kane i think if he can come back and he's healthy it obviously seems like he's healthier than he was last year before the surgery and if he is i think this guy can be a truly just great talent to have on your team and it also probably saves the Rangers from going out there and spending a first or second round pick plus prospects or some other low tier picks like we did last year getting Tarasenko and Kane, right? So you're saving some good draft capital, which is always important, as well as some good prospects who, again, you want to keep your prospects. So if you can save a first rounder and a decent prospect like, I don't know, like an Adam Sakura or, you know, Adam Edstrom, whatever it is, right? A decent prospect that is a very valuable thing to, to to have. I mean, keeping that extra first rounder and prospect plus whatever it is, that is very important. So getting Patrick Kane here might mean the Rangers aren't going to go out there and get a Vladimir Tarasenko or a Patrick Kane type at the deadline who are a rental. We're going to be here for that one playoff run pretty much, right? And we're going to give up a first rounder plus or a second rounder and a third and a prospect, right? So you're giving up some a lot of decent assets for a guy who you could just pretty much get in Patrick Kane if you sign him right now and you'll get him longer he'll be on the team longer and he obviously is more familiar with this team already he's with the team last year on that playoff run is experienced with some of the players and obviously he has a former teammate in Artemi Panarin and taking a look here at some potential lines we could see if the Rangers do add in Patrick Kane Things get a little crazy in the bottom six but the top six is pretty straightforward you have Kreider, Mika, Kane, no surprise there. Kane's in your top six. He's in your top line there with Mika and Kreider. Pretty seamless there. It's a good great fit. You, know, you got two goal scorers alongside the dynamic playmaker and Patrick Kane. Should work out great. The second line stays the exact same. Panarin, Heedle, Lafreniere. If everyone's healthy, Heedle's in there. You know, that's just kind of what, what I'm doing here. If everyone's healthy, Heedle's in there on that second line center. Then you have, though, the bottom six. Now, this is where things get a little hectic, and it's an absolute cluster of a bunch of players here. And one guy, though, from the right side must make his way over to the left wing. So that's where I have Blake Wheeler doing so. Now, you got to decide, though, do you want Will Cooley on that fourth line left wing, or do you want Blake Wheeler? And that's kind of where things get tricky. You know, it's that bottom six that I don't know exactly what will happen. I think Trocek's locked into that third line center. That third line right wing is Kako's spot, but that third line left winger and fourth line left wing spot, I just don't know what'll happen. I'm guessing, like I said, it'll probably be, you know, Cooley or Wheeler as that third line left winger. And then if it, let's say Wheeler does to get that spot, then you're just dropping down Cooley to that fourth line left wing. He's a great player. He's a really good player to have in your fourth line. Although I'd rather see him get more ice time, that might just have to be what happens. And then you move him up with injuries happen or something like that. And your fourth line center, you can pick whether it's, you know, Bonino or Goudreau, and on that right side, maybe you throw one of those guys, you throw Pitlick or, or VC. You know, there's a lot of options you can have in that kind of fourth line slash bottom six, but the top six for me is pretty much a lock of Kreider, Mika, Kane, Panarin, Heedle, Lafreniere, and then your bottom six, you figure it out, do whatever you want. But that top six would be absolutely stacked. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed, please smash the like button. Don't forget to subscribe for daily New York Rangers content. I post every single day. And don't forget to comment down below your guys' thoughts as well. Do you want to see Patrick Kane actually come back and sign with the Rangers? Do you want to see him go somewhere else? And what are your thoughts on the line combos here? Because I think the top six would pretty much be a lock. It's just that bottom six would be a bit of a cluster and would definitely have to see some things moved around. But thanks for watching and see ya.